Well, for the incumbents, it's an enviable position to be in heading into an election. The American economy is growing strongly and the unemployment rate is at its lowest since 1969. So what's driving this boom and can it last? We'll delve into those questions in just a moment. But first, Ellen Gainsford brings us this snapshot of the US economy. During his campaign for the presidency, Donald Trump pledged to put America first. But has his unique brand of economic nationalism paid off two years down the road? By many measures, the US economy is booming. Unemployment is going down, following a trend that started under President Obama. It's now at the lowest level since 1969. Economic growth surged to 4.2% in the second quarter of this year and remains strong at 3.5%. Boosted by Trump's cuts to corporate tax under his 2017 Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. But as the amount of money going into state coffers has gone down, the budget deficit has risen, expanding to an estimated $782 billion in Trump's first full fiscal year as president. Some critics of the president's policies warn that the U.S. economy is riding a sugar high. They say that the recent increase in growth is partly down to companies rushing to secure products before trade wars worsen. Trump's tariffs have proved to be one of his most controversial tactics at home and abroad. His main target has been China, a country he accuses of unfair trade practices. On the international stage, Trump has steadily torn up trade deals withdrawing from the Trans-Pacific Partnership and forcing a renegotiation of NAFTA. But it's how his policies are being felt by everyday Americans that's about to be put to the test. Economic growth is no guarantee of midterm success. Well, to talk about this further, we can go to Washington and speak to Adam Posen, president of the Peterson Institute of International Economics. Adam, thanks for being with us. When you look at the big figures for the American economy, it looks like a pretty rosy picture. Is that trickling down to voters? Are they all feeling the benefit of the booming American economy? Not all, but a pretty big majority. I mean, you are having this enormous fiscal stimulus, even where you've got the tax cuts, you've got spending, and a lot of it is biased towards helping the rich people and corporate profits, but some of it then leads to growth that gets to other people. We're seeing a bit of real wage growth. Consumer numbers are just out and they're as confident as they've been any time in the cycle. So politically, it may not be a good thing and it may not be sustainable, but they're definitely feeling it for a large part of the country. And is this playing into the discussion around these elections? Are people kind of hailing the great economy as being a sort of reason to, to I suppose, bump the Republicans? I'm not sure about that. I, I think that to a good degree, people are aware that some of the good stuff in the economy, the share of it going to most working people is still very small. And to a lesser degree, I think people are aware that this is something of a temporary boom. But again, this is heavily influenced by people's partisan identity. Republicans, and particularly Republican males, tend to see the economy very differently than Democrats and Democratic females. The reality is it's the usual groups of poorer people and people of color who are not benefiting as much as others, and that's just how it works here, unfortunately. Adam, stay with us. We're going to turn to a report now from one of our correspondents looking at the aspect of small businesses in this election. Confidence among small businesses is at its highest level since records began. And our correspondent, Philip Crowther, has been speaking to people in Ohio there about how they're feeling about the economy and, crucially, who they're thanking for the current boom. Three manufacturing companies in Ohio, packaging, glass and steel, all three are doing well, especially over the last two years. The reasons they give for the upturn, though, they differ. Rick Harmon works at Value Added Packaging. Absolutely wonderful, in my opinion. Companies share his assessment of the U.S. economy across the country. Here, they are recruiting and expanding. Mary and Jared Wenrick design cardboard boxes for manufacturing companies. The people in Washington, they're cheerleaders for manufacturing. And I think right now with the U.S. economy and, and the, the strength of the dollar, that the U.S. is one of the, one of the top in um, leading in manufacturing right now. And I think jobs are coming back here. And they are, especially in small and medium-sized businesses. At the Glenny Glass Company, 25 new jobs were added over the last two years. 
Braxton Smith's business is manufacturing and distributing flat glass. He says taxes have been reduced by 10 percent during the Trump administration. Pre-Trump with the Obama administration, uh, you know, we were growing, but, but at a fairly sluggish pace, um, maybe 2 percent, that kind of thing. We're seeing a lot more new construction, which affects positively the glass business. Across town, Cincinnati Gasket also deals in glass and mechanical seals. It's the shipping department is a good clue for how things are going. Uh, we probably ship, uh, what, 50 packages a day, UPS, and you can see the pile there. Got a Larry Eulenbrock's company has grown too, and he thanks the president for one particular like policy. The thing that's worked <laughs> the quickest was the aluminum and the steel tariffs. I mean, there is such a direct line from what the president did to what has happened to us already. Larry concurs that the U.S. economy is indeed booming. They all say it is Trump's economy. Well, Adam Posen is still with us in the Peterson Institute in Washington. Adam, hearing there at the end of that report, people welcoming the trade tariffs as helping their businesses. Is that, you know, I suppose, how does that play out across the whole economy? We've been talking an awful lot about the damage from trade tariffs, but some people seem to be seeing benefits from it. Well, there's always going to be a few. And, I mean, your reporter was focusing on a particular slice of people in Ohio with particular kinds of businesses. But it is a simple fact that there are 40 jobs that use steel and aluminum as an input for every job that produces steel and aluminum. And there is almost as many businesses, it's at least 20 to 1 businesses, for every business that directly involves steel and aluminum production. So most people, not just the big multinationals trading, most small businesses are suffering as a result. It's just on net, they've got all these other things going on in the U.S. economy. The other point to be made is the tariffs are going to get worse. So the U.S.-China trade battle is, seems to be escalating, consciously by the Trump administration. And after Christmas, after New Year's, it's going to start to affect workers, individual workers' pocketbooks quite a bit more. And that's a challenge that the next Congress, however it's composed, are going to have to deal with to a certain extent. What are the big, is that the biggest challenge, do you think, they're going to have to deal with on the economic front? On the economic front, the Congress has essentially two big challenges. One, as you say, is trade, uh, both for the good of the country long term and because specific constituencies like agriculture, consumers, auto buyers, producers of machinery are getting hurt by the trade war. They're going to have to figure out how to rein in the executive in the U.S. The other issue is going to be fiscal policy. If the Democrats win the control of the lower house, as seems likely, then you won't see any major changes to tax policy. There's a possible that they'll get an agreement on infrastructure, and you almost certainly get no progress on deficit reduction. If you get a Republican still maintaining control of both houses of Congress, you probably get additional tax cuts, which is kind of crazy at this point in the cycle, but that's unfortunately what I would expect. And do you see the economy now as being at the peak of the cycle? We have all of this stimulus, as you mentioned, from the tax cuts pouring into the American economy, boosting so many of these headline figures that we see. Are we about to turn for the worst, do you think? I think it's going to take a little while longer. I mean, it's possible that the tariffs not only have the long-term effects and the effects on people's purchasing power, they start to erode confidence in business more broadly and undercut investment. There's some initial signs of that. So it may be that by this time next year or even six months from now, we'll be feeling it. More likely, though, I believe that as long as there isn't large inflation, which causes the Federal Reserve to hike rates faster, we're still going to be expanding well into 2020. If the Democrats do take control of the House, which, as you mentioned, is, is one of the options that looks uh, probable at this stage, do you see there being any pushback on the markets? Do you think investors are going to be concerned about what direction economic policy may take? I don't think so, um, because, as I said, it's not like the structural changes that the Trump people made in terms of tax cuts benefiting business are going to change very much. Regulation, interpretation and implementation, especially in areas like energy and environment, again, Congress uh, on its own, the, the House of Representatives cannot change that. That's very much in the executive mandate. 
I think there will be a little bit of friction because there will be hearings into the various seemingly corrupt activities of various members of the Trump administration and his family. Um, and that will create a bit of uncertainty. But basically, this will be deadlock um, on the economic front. Should we be worried about inflation at this stage with the economy at this point in the boom cycle? I don't think of it as something due to the cycle. I, I think we are still got a little ways to go to get more people into the workforce. And there's a lot of room for companies to increase wages if they want new employees, given all the profits the companies have and given how little wage growth there's been for many years. Just as in Germany, there was catch-up wage growth after several years of boom without much of an inflation problem. There is, however, more of a risk of inflation now than I had thought any time in the last 10, 12 years. We're going to have the combination of the tariffs putting up inflation, the Iran sanctions interfering with oil prices. Maybe wages will come in faster than I think, which wouldn't be all bad. And then you put all that together, plus the ongoing fiscal stimulus, the Fed could have to accelerate. I think we'll know that in the first six months of 2019. I still think more likely than not, the Fed will be able to just stay where it is and inflation won't go up very fast. Okay, Adam Posen of the Peterson Institute, thank you very much for speaking to us from Washington. Thank you. Well, that's it from us for now, but do get in touch with your comments on the American elections. You'll find us on Facebook at France24Business, or you can tweet me at NewStephen. Until next time, 